Please be advised that any changes you plan to make in diet and lifestyle should be approved by your health care provider. Do not discontinue the use of your prescription medication without his or her approval. Welcome to God's true method of healing. Hello, and welcome to today's God's True Method of Healing program with our friend and host, Marlene McKinney. She will be explaining some of our health issues using the Bible, science, and information that is readily available today. So please tune in and be blessed. Here's your host, Marlene McKinney. Thank you, Liana, and thank you, LaToya, for introducing our program for today. We just want to take this opportunity to say thank you to you, our listening audience, for tuning in each day. I've met quite a number of you since I've been home here in Nassau, and it's been such a delight, such a pleasure, as we've shopped together in the food stores, um, have, we've walked together, some of us have met walking um, others I may have met at church or just in passing. I just want you to know thank you so much for making me feel so welcome here at home. Before we dive in, because I sometimes forget, let's have a quick word of prayer. Father in heaven, as we are about to unopen so much beautiful information about our health and how we can eat to live, we just thank you. And we want you to know, Lord, that we will praise you. We ask that you please help us to be obedient to your word. Help us, Lord. Give us the strength that we need. Give us the wisdom we need so that we will eat a healthy diet. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. So once again, I want to say thank you for tuning in. And I do pray that you will find today's program to be a blessing not just for you, but for you and your family. As always, I like to encourage you to share what you learn with someone. Call someone and let them know that we have new programs from now until, I guess i let you know, these are all going to be new programs and then you would have to just ask for a repeat. As I am more settled now than I was before, I am trying to record fresh programs on a daily basis. So this program is being recorded today as you are hearing it. And um, no, we're not live in studio, but every morning before um, I start my routine, as I have my devotion, I want to uh, record some fresh programs so that as we go throughout these days, we will be more informed and more um, aware um, as to what we need to be doing if, as, in regards to our health. Living food, the phytochemical revolution is what we're going to be talking about today. Um, there's a lot of talk around town about certain beans we shouldn't eat and all these foods that we need to stay away from. And I just thought I'd like to educate us on why it's so important that we do eat some of these foods that we are being told not to eat. Um, but before we get into that, I want to make a quick announcement that we do have some upcoming cooking classes beginning August the 5th. If you miss this one, if you're going to be traveling and you're not going to be able to be a part of this group, it's going to be an ongoing program. Hopefully, we will continue our six-week series of classes, which begins August the 5th. Um, and hopefully, we will be able to uh, get you to be a part of those classes. I'm going to allow my niece now, LaToya, to give you um, an idea of how to reach me for upcoming cooking classes and seminars. We do also have a seminar at the British Colonial Hilton coming up very soon, and so I hope that you'll be tuned in for that as well. So tune in now as LaToya gives you information. To reach Marlene for upcoming cooking classes and seminars, or if you have been blessed by her ministry and would like to give her a love offering to help to further the ministry, please call her at 676-9464. That's 676 676- 9464. You can Facebook her as Marlene McKinney or you can visit her website at McKinney'sOven.com. Thank you, Toya, for that information. I do hope to hear from you as I have been hearing from quite a number of you, like I said already. Every time, every time you eat a natural food, 
for example, maybe a piece of broccoli. And I love broccoli because broccoli is in our cruciferous family. Um, you are receiving what is known as a cocktail of a vast number of active compounds that will influence your health for the better. Now, how many of us do not like broccoli? I, I know that some of us don't like vegetables, but we're going to have to retrain our, our taste buds. It's time for us to do just that. We're going to have to pray earnestly and ask God to help us so we can retrain these taste buds that love other foods more than it loves the good foods like broccoli and cauliflower and all these great foods. Some of these foods are classified as vitamins and minerals, essential fats like we spoke of yesterday, or amino acids. However, there are many more substances that play a very, very important part in our health. And these are called phytochemicals. Now, I know that you have heard this word phytochemicals before. And they have a major impact on our body systems, helping to promote health and prevent disease. But what really is phytochemicals? It sounds like such a big word, phytochemicals. Well, phyton means plant in Greek. So P-H-Y-T-O-N, the first part of the word phytochemicals, means plants. And so we know for sure that phytochemical foods come from what? Plant foods. And so what we want you to know is that phytochemicals are biologically active compounds in food. They are not classified as nutrients in that our lives do not depend on them as they do on vitamins. However, phytochemicals do play a vital role in our body's biochemistry in ways that affect our health as significantly as vitamins and minerals. So in this sense, they are best thought of as um, what we would call semi-essential nutrients. As they are stored in the body. It is best to eat foods rich in phytochemicals on a regular basis. Over a hundred phytochemicals have been identified. And some of them, which are, act as antioxidants, immune system boosters, and hormone stabilizers. I will list just a few of them for you, and we will um, take a look at some of these phytochemicals that can help to support good health. You know, we are trying to fight cancer, heart disease, diabetes. We are trying to fight um, all kinds of ailments, high blood pressure, high, high cholesterol. We are trying to live a healthy life. There's nothing like a person who is, um, you'd be alive, but the quality of life is not there. Now, if I were to have an accident in a car or who knows, just fell down or, or something happened, God forbid, that it happens to any of us, and I may lose my, my limbs, I may not be able to walk, whatever, then we know that it's an accident. That's the way God designed. But if we can every day make a decision based on what we put in our mouth that will determine whether or not we walk, talk, sleep, eat, um, whether we, sorry, uh, can see, I think that we should make educated decisions. And that is why we're here on the air every day because we want to help you, our listeners, to make educated decisions, okay? And so we are going to look at some of these phytochemicals. Some of them you already know. How about the one that's found in garlic, onions, leek, chives, and shallots? How many of us already know the one I'm talking about? That's right. It's allium compounds. A-L-L-I-U-M, allium. And I know you won't remember all of this information, but I know that you will remember that some of these foods we need to include in our diet. When we were cooking chili here in my home, which we had yesterday, my husband's determined that every time we cook chili, the chili must have a bulb or two of garlic. Now, I'm not talking about just a clove of garlic. I'm talking about the entire bulb or two of garlic and two onions. So a friend came by and she said, this has just absolutely too many onions. Now, I'll be honest with you. When I cook my onions for my family, sometimes they're as big as my head. I'm not too particular on how the size of them. I just want us to eat them because I know that they're healthy for us. But she was saying, oh, goodness, girl, this is just too much, too much onions in here. But as she got home, she was like, it was pretty good. So 
the allium compounds, which are members um, of the allium gene, genus, sorry, include the garlic, the onions, the leeks, the chives, and the shallots. Garlic has long been renowned as a health food, and there are many people who are benefiting from it every day. Matter of fact, I just shared with a friend of mine that you can take the garlic and use it for fungus on the toes. You know, you can have, you know, some of us have um, what we call athlete's foot. And you can take the garlic and sprinkle the garlic powder on there, like you're sprinkling flour on um, powder. Um, you can take the fresh garlic and just put it between the toes. It may burn the skin a little because it is very strong, so be very careful. You can lubricate the area with a little oil first, and this will definitely help. Though it is rich in many vitamins and minerals, the main active ingredient seems to be sulfur compounds. These include allicin, allicin, dial desulfide, and another one that I will try to pronounce, dial um, trisulfide. Studies from China show that people who eat a lot of garlic are protected against, guess what, stomach cancer. And um, we know that we do have stomach cancer in this country. This may be because garlic is able to block the conversion of nitrites or nitrates, um, or both of them, found in many preserved foods into cancer-causing nitros nitrosamines. Did you get that? Garlic blocks the nitrites and the nitrates that are cancer-causing. And these are found, like I said, in many preserved foods like the salamis and the hot dogs and the um, sometimes even dried fruits may have these um, sulfites and what have you in there. Um, and the garlic blocks the cancer-causing um, agent nitrosamines. Garlic can also inhibit the actions of af aflatoxins, which are naturally occurring substances found in um, peanuts and other foods which can cause cancer. Let's continue now. It says the results of a large study involving 41,837 women found, um, from Iowa aged between 55 and 69 indicated that garlic was the most protective type of vegetable against colon cancer. And colon cancer is definitely on the rise here in our country. In addition to that, by acting as an antioxidant, garlic helps prevent both cancer and heart disease. Garlic significantly lowers cholesterol in the blood and prevents atherosclerosis. A three-year study at Tagore Medical College in India divided over 400 patients who had already suffered heart attacks into two groups. One group was given garlic supplements equal to 6 to 10 cloves per day. They suffered fewer heart attacks and had significantly lower cholesterol counts than those who did not take garlic. Garlic also helps prevent blood clots probably a safer way to maintain thin blood than taking an aspirin a day, which can cause stomach bleeding. So we're going to make sure that we include this phytochemical more in our diet. We get the phytochemical allium from garlic, onion, leeks, chives, and shallots. So let's include more of those in our diet. If you don't like the size of them, then cut them smaller or simply invest in a vegetable chopper or a food processor that can blend them a little, you know, chop them a little finer, or just put them in the blender. It will definitely um, help the food to taste better. Another um, phytochemical or plant chemical, plant food, is the anthocyanidins. Did I get that right? I hope I did. It's, um, these are particularly plentiful in berries and grapes. We have the anthocyanidins and we have the pro-anthocyanidins. Cyanidins, right, I said that right. These are types of bioflavonoids um, reputedly good against gout and certain arthritis. So you'd want to take in more of these types of foods, like the berries and the grapes. That's strawberries, blueberries, 
blackberries, raspberries, and we have all kinds of grapes. I imagine that even our sea grapes may have some of these phytochemicals in them. Bioflavonoids, these have a number of beneficial roles. They act as potent antioxidants. They can bind to toxic metals, okay, and escort them out of your body. They have a synergistic effect on vitamin C, stabilizing it in human tissue. They have a uh, bacterial, res- bacterial static um, and or antibiotic effect, which accounts for their anti-infection properties. And they also are anti-carcinogenic. They are used to deal with capillary fragility, bleeding gums, varicose veins, hemorrhoids, bruises, strains, injuries, and thrombosis. Bioflavonoids include rutin, lots of buckwheat. How many of us love buckwheat? And it's um, also found in um, citrus fruit. The, the one found in, cit- in the citrus family is the hesperidin. The best food sources are, guess what they are? Growing wild in the Bahamas, rose hips, buckwheat leaves, citrus fruit, which we have an abundance here, berries, broccoli, cherries, grapes, papaya. I'm having issues with the fact that we're purchasing papaya in the food store when they grow wild here in the Bahamas. Cantaloupe, melons, um, plums, tea, uh, and tomatoes. Also the grapes. There are also special bioflavonoids in cucumbers that stop cancer-causing hormones from binding to cells. As far as possible, you can grow your cucumbers. I'm just now trying to get a little garden going with the help of one of my little friends, um, Workly. He's going to help me get my garden going, um, and my husband, of course. And I pray that we'll be able to get our cucumbers and zucchini and squash and all these great foods growing so we will be able to stay away from the waxes and all the pesticides that are used in the foods that we are purchasing in locally in our food stores. Now, there are some food stores that are carrying um, lots of organic foods, and I'm going to see if they will sponsor our program so I'll be able to advertise them here on the air. Then we have the boswellic acid. These, this is a powerful anti-inflammatory agent and therefore helpful in conditions such as arthritis. That's right, and it's found in the herb Frankincense. Remember when the um, wise men went to Jesus, they took a myrrh, which is a herb, very good for so many things. My mom will tell you that you have to have myrrh. Myrrh is a a herb that you should always have on on hand. And now we're finding out that the herb frankincense has a very important um, anti-inflammatory agent, which is great for arthritis. And we know also that flax is good because it's anti-inflammatory. Capsaicin, abundant in hot peppers. It helps protect DNA from damage. Carotenoids, as the name implies, carotenoids, one type of which is beta-carotene, are plentiful in carrots. They are, they are also abundant in other fruit and vegetables, including sweet potato, watercress, and peas. They act as important anti-aging antioxidants. Now, I think we all need some of that because we don't want to age and we don't want to get old. Then we have the chlorophyll. This is the substance that makes green plants green. We spoke a lot about chlorophyll in other programs, but very quickly, chlorophyll-rich foods like wheatgrass, algae, seaweeds, and green vegetables help build the blood. Vitamin C, B12, B6, A, and K, and folic acid are among the nutrients needed to help blood um, keep blood healthy. Research has shown that components of chlorophyll found in foods when fed in very small purified amounts may stimulate the production of red blood cells in the bone marrow. Chlorophyll has been shown to help protect against cancer and certain forms of radiation to kill germs and to act as a powerful wound healer. Cereal grasses have the nutrient profile of a dark green vegetable rather than that of a grain, so they are gluten-free and safe for those who have celiac disease due to allergies to gluten. So try to get in some chlorophyll. Like I said, the algae, the seaweed, 
um, in the form of kelp, you get it in the form of dulse. All these seaweeds you can purchase in our local health food stores around town, green vegetables, um, wheatgrass. These will give us the chlorophyll that we need. Then we have cumarin and we have um, chlorogenic acid. These substances prevent the formation of cancer-causing nitrosamines and are found in a wide variety of fruits and vegetables, including tomatoes, green peppers, pineapple, strawberries, and carrots. You know, when I'm making my smoothies, I just have to have strawberries. And I am so delighted that as I go from food store to food store, that they are selling now organic strawberries. And it seems like I don't think I see any of the others on the market, which is such a good plus. And so you can go to the regular supermarket and get the the organic strawberries. Because remember, strawberries are a part of the dirty dozen, and we have to make sure that we're eating clean foods. And lots of pineapples are in season right now. And being that they are in season, they're more healthy for us. They have more cumarins and uh, chlorogenic acids, these uh, phytochemicals, because they are now in season. Then we have um, curcumin, a powerful antioxidant found in turmeric, corn, and yellow peppers. It's also found in mustard because mustard's an irritant. We would prefer you not to use that one. Then we also have um, another one that's found in um, soybeans. It's called genistine. Genistine an abundance found in soybeans. This substance, a type of phytoestrogen, um, prevents breast cancer. That's right. It prevents breast cancer, um, prostate cancer, and other lumps from growing and spreading. Research is beginning to focus on two isoflavonoids, genistein and diastein. J- Japanese women who generally have a lower risk of breast cancer than women in other industrialized societies, have been found to have higher levels of these in their bodies. They may protect against the harmful effects of unopposed estrogen. In fact, a recent study from Singapore, which monitored a group of women for early signs of breast cancer, found that the more soy a woman ate, the less chance there was of them having pre-cancer changes in her breast cells. I hope you heard that, ladies of the Bahamas. There's so many of us. I mean, with tears in my eyes, I literally do. So many of us with breast cancer. The more soy these women ate, the more soy they ate, the less cancer these women had. A likely ideal intake for cancer prevention is around 5 milligrams a day of genistein and deadstein, D-A-I-D-Z-E-I-N, which you can get from a 12-ounce serving of soy milk or a serving of tofu. Now, I do advise you, let's finish this first and then I'll say what I advise on the soy. Soy milk can be used in drinks and cereals like how we use cow's milk. While tofu is excellent in stir fries and you can replace it in your stuffed shells and your lasagnas. And these are some of the foods we will be teaching you how to prepare in our vegetarian cooking class that starts August the 5th. You know, what's interesting is people think that when you say you're a vegetarian, oh, I can't eat at your house because I'm only going to have carrot sticks. Well, I assure you that it's not just carrot sticks that's keeping the weight on our bodies. We are eating a little more than that. Tofu is the richest source of isoflavonoids, while very processed soy products are the poorest source. Uh, However, um, we don't advise having much more than this. You don't need much more than 12 ounces per day um, of any of these uh, food items. Even plant estrogens could theoretically be estrogenic in excess and can develop allergies to soy if you eat too much of it. Now, now that is very true because my husband has an allergy to soy. Um, not all soy, but definitely the soy milk is giving him some issues with his sinuses. And it may be because we initially started off with such a burst of energy enjoying the soy, he ate so much of it. Or it could be that some time ago, 
we purchased soy milks and tofu products that were not um, we did not, we were not careful to make sure that they were um, what's the word we didn't we didn't we weren't careful to make sure that they were not genetically modified. So if you're purchasing soy products, make sure that they do say on the package non n o n g m o. Okay, they're not genetically modified um, material. I think we have time for just one more um, phytochemical. Let's see which one I would like to share, and then we will probably do a part two tomorrow as we begin um, to share more on phytochemicals, these plant chemicals. You know, so we need to be careful. Um, the information we're listening to, you know, those that are educating us, I often tell people, pray earnestly and ask the Lord to lead you. Ask the Holy Spirit's leading. We need the Holy Spirit in our lives, and every day we should ask for the gift of the Holy Spirit because when we get the gift of the Holy Spirit, we are told in the spirit of prophecy that we get all other gifts, and so we need the gift of the Holy Spirit. So why not pray for that even now as I'm sharing? Let's see if we have time for just one more, and then we will um, go to the close of our program. Lignans. I've spoken a lot about lignans. Lignans, these are part of the group of compounds known as phytoestrogens, plant substances that can induce biological responses in the body. They do this by mimicking the actions of the body's own estrogens, usually by binding to the estrogen receptors. They are ingested as inactive compounds and then activated by the gut microflora. The main source of lignans, get this, I know you already know it because I've said it before, is found in flax seeds. That's right. And they are found also, guess where? I've told you this already, so I know you know this too, in beans, nuts, fruit, cereals in smaller quantities. So the larger quantities of lignans is found in the flax. Then you find the, the next, I guess, larger quantity would be in the, in the beans. And then in smaller quantities, you'll find it in the nuts, the seeds, the fruits, and cereals. Lignans are important. Lignans bind cancer cells and help them to, one, stop growing, two, they be flushed out of your system, um, or it inhibits the growth of, of cancer cells. I don't know anyone, anyone, who would want to have cancer today. I don't. I really don't. And I know that you don't either. Um, and that's why... Each day, as I share here with you, I'm sharing with myself also. Let's have a word of prayer as we close. Father in heaven, Lord, we need you. Send us the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives that we would have strength to go from day to day, that we would have wisdom from on high as to what to eat, when to eat, how much to eat. Oh God, there's so much that we need, and we need you daily. Help us in our journey through this life. Help us to make wise decisions. Lord, be with those that are listening, those that are sick, those that are, are shut in, those that are tuning in for the first time who are searching. Help us in our journey. Help them in their journey. Give them what they need. In Jesus' name, amen. Now stay tuned for Latoya as she gives you information on how you can contact me. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Remember, 3 John 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Claim these promises, and mighty things will be accomplished in your life. LaToya? To reach Marlene for upcoming cooking classes and seminars, or if you have been blessed by her ministry and would like to give her a love offering to help to further the ministry, Please call her at 676-9464. That's 676-9464. You can Facebook her as Marlene McKinney or you can visit her website at mckinneysoven.com.